I don't like losing. I don't like failing. I like making good things happen in the world. So if someone is not seeing the results they came to me for, which I'm really optimistic about bringing to them, and if it didn't happen, I'm not so happy about it. So why? What could be the reason? Hi, this is Dr. Joy Kong. Welcome back. So I want to talk about whether or not stem cell therapy is going to work for everybody. And what is your success rate? So stem cell therapy has gained tremendous popularity. And why? Because it works for a lot of people for a lot of things. And people are seeing incredible improvements and in the quality of their life. Before stem cell therapy, maybe not so good. And afterwards, tremendous improvement, right? I've seen that over and over and over in my own practice. So that's why the patients keep coming, right? I'm not out there advertising, and but people, why are people finding it? The mainstream medicine is not supporting it. Doctors can't even put out an ad talking about stem cell therapy because that ad is not going to be run. It's going to be shut down. So why are people keeping coming? Because they heard it worked for somebody. They read somewhere it worked. Their family saw improvement. So who doesn't want to have a better life? But the question is, is it going to work for me? And doctor, what is your success rate when somebody that actually comes into your door and get treatment from you? So to be very straightforward, if you want a simple answer, I would say about 90% of my patients will see some kind of improvement, right? It may not be the exact same thing that they came to me for, but any improvement in life. So maybe they came to me for knee pain, but maybe the knee pain was not improved enough, but their headache went away or their fatigue went away, their sex drive improved, their sleep is better, or maybe some kind of rash went away. That happened over and over again. So as far as people seeing benefits and improvement, I would say 90%. But is it for everybody? No. There are some people who say, well, I have not noticed any benefit. One thing I do want to stress is that not all stem cell therapy is the same. So just because you got stem cell therapy, it doesn't mean that it's good stem cell therapy, right? It depends on what the cells are. I always talked about how stem cell therapy, there are only two things that matter, the cells, and then where to put it, right? So that's the art of medicine. So what kind of cells are you getting? Are you getting your own cells, your own stem cells, which are your own age? So the older you are or the sicker you are, the tendency is that your own stem cells will be more defective. But if you're using younger source, such as something from the umbilical cord from a newborn baby, right? Every time when a man and woman have sex, there's fertilized egg, there's like a reset process. So there's this great reset. A lot of genetic issues and cellular decline was wiped off. There's a flash of light, there's a reset. So the newborn baby that got healthily born, just remember, no one in the United States is using aborted fetuses. Okay, maybe you can find in Ukraine, um, maybe some other countries. I don't know, a single doctor that's using aborted fetuses in this country. So all these from, are from live healthy births. So when we use the umbilical cord that the baby came out with, so the baby is live and healthy, crying, right? Family's happy. You need to cut the cord, right? You cut the cord and then Usually the cord and the placenta is thrown in the trash, but now we can utilize it for getting stem cells out of it and for a lot of healing purposes. And those cells are much younger than the baby's stem cells. So whatever does floating through the baby's blood, these umbilical cord stem cells actually are a lot younger because they were trapped when the baby's forming. It's called embryogenesis, right? In the middle of this forming of this new organism, a lot of cells, younger cells were trapped. So that's the kind of cells we're using. So that would be superior in a lot of ways to a person's own. If you don't believe me, just watch my video, Are All MICs Created Equal? Where I actually went through different studies. So I, I never I always say, don't trust my opinion. It doesn't matter. What I think doesn't matter, I want to show you what has been shown, what has been proven by all these scientists who did dedicate years of their lives answering certain questions. So the younger cells will be more effective. And if you use younger cells that have not been manipulated, such as been grown in cell culture to many generations, as what we see everywhere outside of the U.S., it can be China, it can be 
Central and South America, uh, it can be Europe, a lot of uh, cells are expanded. So when you start to expand the cells, then the cells start to lose potency. So I talked about that in another video called, um, you know, are expanded cells better? So that's a huge point. There's actually a contention point. A lot, a lot of people are arguing that's a better source of cells. Uh, but I talked about some of the evidence uh, in that particular video about expanded cells versus native cells. So native, never been expanded, never grown in culture, never allowed them to multiply into lots of cells, which in that process, that could be a genetic uh, degradation and changes in genetic expressions and expression of surface markers that will cause different kinds of uh, rejection from the new person that the, right, that's getting the cells. So, so that's the cell type, but where to put it? You know, like how does the doctor is, do this treatment? Are we just bombarding a local area thinking that we, I just put the cells in the local area? I'm counting on the cells to become your local tissue. I'm, you know, I'm bombarding it. And as if that is how the cells work. So that's one line of thought, which is not supported by research in the last 20 years because research has shown over and over and over that the majority of the mechanisms of why the cells work is because they are signaling. They're signaling not just your local tissue, but also your entire body by talking through with your immune system. So, so that's the art, right? So you, first of all, you have to do it right. You have to choose the right cell source to make sure that these cells are the best type to help you heal. And then you have to know where to put it. So if everything's done right, like I'm trying to do everything right in my clinic, Still, my success rate is about 90%. So maybe 10% of patients are saying that they didn't notice any benefit. So, well, truth be told, it's still pretty good in medicine. <laughs> if a medication has a 90% chance of making you do better, so that, that's a good medicine. But those 10%, let me tell you, give me a headache because I don't like it. I don't like losing. I don't like failing. I like making <laughs> making good things happen in the world. So if someone is not seeing the results they came to me for, which I'm really optimistic about bringing to them, and if it didn't happen, I'm not so happy about it. So why? What could be the reason? So there are certain things to consider. One, we actually know that certain viruses can selectively attack mesenchymal stem cells. Which means, strangely, these mesenchymal stem cells, we know have receptors for herpes family virus. So there's occult infection, hidden infection, such as things like from the herpes family. Then they could selectively destroy the mesenchymal stem cells that I'm giving to patients. Again, it's a tug, tug of war. Just because you have occult infection doesn't mean that I can't give you stem cells because the stem cells can also help your body fight infection, as we have seen in clinical studies. So they can attack and help you get rid of the virus. The virus can attack them and try to kill them off, right? So it's a tug of war. So sometimes we don't know which side is going to win. But this is why I give people treatment. Since I'm pretty sure 90% of the time they're going to get some kind of improvement, I'm not going to let them suffer. I'm, I'm not going to say, oh, let's get rid of everything, every concern you have before we do any treatment. No, let's get you better first. But if you don't get better, what could be the reasons? Could it be hidden infections? Well, then let's run some viral titers. Let's, let's run some, you know, panels. Maybe go see an infectious disease specialist and see what is going on. The hidden infections can be in your gut, can be in your blood, or could be in your dental area, right? Have everybody seen the movie Root Cause? A great movie, so well done, so interesting to watch, but phenomenal information. What's happening with festering infections and toxicity right in your head? So that will be along the draws, right? Along your, the bones where the teeth are at. Those could be a reservoir for infections and toxicity. The root canals can be very, very scary source of prolonged toxicity and infection. And that can, that can kill you. That can kill you, can trigger a lot of mental conditions and, and systemic diseases. So, so that's something you need to be looked at. So could that be the hidden infection? Or even, 
after the uh, wisdom teeth extraction. So like I had my wisdom teeth extracted, like most people in this country seems like. So I had no idea that a simple extraction um, that everybody else does it could mean that there are lingering problems that could be affecting my health. So I actually did a CT scan and showed that I had cavitation. So which means that wisdom teeth were taken out, probably wasn't taken out perfectly correctly, as certain ligaments around the teeth are still there. And the result is that the bones could not fill in. Then you ended up with a pocket where fat, toxins, infections, everything can linger, forming a pocket, just, just festering. Most of the time is asymptomatic. I thought I was perfectly fine until I did the CT scan, right? I actually had the surgery done. Not fun to have any surgeries done in the mouth, but it may be necessary. It can take out the lingering toxic, like a dump that's right in your head. So could that be the cause? It could. Um, so hidden infection could be one reason or just hidden toxicity period, right? You can't have toxicity in your dental reasons, but you can have toxicity around your body. It could be heavy metal, could be some other kind of organic toxins. And if your cells are constantly bathed in toxins, I can give you stem cells. The cells are not going to respond very well. So could that be preventing the cells from helping you to heal? And that could be a good, big reason. So you need to clean that up right? Microbiome, people have a lot of imbalances in their gut and that keeps triggering uh, leaky gut and self-attack, right? You, you're getting all these uh, antigens going into your bloodstream, causing your immune system to overreact. And so you never, you never get to the state of actually repair and regeneration. You're just going haywire in your body. So unless you remove this inciting stimulus, this uh, toxic load, then that's always going to be going on. And that could be preventing you from reaching the benefits. What could be some of the other reasons? Well, you know, we all know what severe stress can do. So severe stress and also negative thinking. People don't underestimate. If you believe you are sick and then you are doomed and nothing's going to help you, mm, the thought, thoughts have a lot of power. So if you don't believe me, go on some other <laughs> YouTube channels and listen to some podcasts. So there are various reasons, but the reasons as a doctor that you know I can easily look into will be hidden infections and toxicity, microbiome in imbalances, or some you know there are a lot of things that that we do in integrated medicine that shows that can really affect a person's wellness such as sleep and stress, et cetera. So these are some of the main reasons that a person may not notice a difference after stem cell therapy. We know stem cell therapy works. We've seen plenty of research for many decades. We've seen in animal studies how it rejuvenates the animals, how it helped them live longer and younger. So, And then we dissected the animals and we saw all the markers of the cells was returned to the younger state. So by all measurements, the cells were younger cells. So the organism is, is a younger organism. So we know it works. But if it didn't work for a particular person, there could be reasons that's worth investigating. And that could be life-saving, right? To find out why. So, and then some people, I want to just stress one point. Some people say, oh, I have a lot of inflammation in my body. I think I should get rid of the inflammation first before I get stem cell treatment. The answer is that no, you don't have to. Get stem cell treatment so you can reduce the inflammation and shift your immune system. What's interesting was that studies have shown low inflammatory state versus high inflammatory state. The high inflammatory state actually make the cell work harder and better. So they are kind of, a, you know, sprung into action more readily and more effectively because you have a lot of inf inflammation. So work with your system, right? You don't have to be perfect if you get stem cells. And that's why we do stem cells. So you, your body can get to a better state. So that's kind of the philosophy behind it. I hope that put things in perspective as far as success rates. And, and can you guarantee? Of course, no one can guarantee. No doctor, no legitimate doctor is going to guarantee any results, even if it's a treatment that's FDA approved, right? Even if it's a, a medicine that's 
uh, approved by the FDA says this is, treats this condition, no doctor is going to guarantee a result because the human body is very complex. Um, so, but it could give you a clue to help you look for the real cause or the hidden cause if you do not get the results you wanted. So I hope this is helpful and um, I will answer a different question next time. But right now this question popped up. So I thought I'd do an episode on this and I really hope you enjoy it. And if anyone's looking to reach me, you can always go on my website, joykongmd.com and you will see everything I do. So actually this weekend, I'm going to do a training where I teach a group of doctors how to do stem cell therapy. It's a two-day training that I do twice a year. Basically, I'm giving out all my secrets uh, to make sure that people are doing it right. Because sadly, um, I would say most of the doctors who are doing stem cell therapy are not getting ad- adequate education. They don't have enough of the foundation uh, in exactly what the cells are, how they work, what types work better, where should you put it? Because the cells work so well and it seems so easy. So people don't think they need to learn uh, and, and really study it in order to be effective. You can be expected to, to a certain point, but uh, if you don't have the background knowledge and really have it, you know, really be a true physician, which is that you are the guide for patients, that you have the understanding of the human body and what you're doing to it, uh, then, you know, you're, you're half-assing it, right? You're not as effective as possible. So what I'm doing is to make sure that everybody have the right information and it's going to be as effective as possible so they can maximize the results for their patients. Again, my clinic's in Los Angeles and um, we, I take great pride in helping patients and we truly, truly care about our patients' well-being, and um, I, yeah, I'm happy to, you know, to help anybody in need. Um, if you're interested in seeing the different type of conditions that we have encountered at our clinic, a glimpse of it will be just go on the Academy website, the Academy I, I provide my trainings through. So it's called American Academy of Integrative Cell Therapy. So aaict.org. On there, there's a section of case studies. And majority of those cases are actually my patients. And it can give you a just an idea. It's not all the different cases we've seen, but kind of a portion, a glimpse of the variety and the kind of things we've seen. And it's very empowering and very, it gives a lot of hope. And um, yeah, so that's that's what's driving all this, right? Giving hope and, and real relief for, you know, to improve people's lives. So uh, until next time, And thank you so much for listening to me again.